Hi everyone, it's Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden. Hi. I am Hi. going to teach you how to paint this beautiful painting called Glacial Lake. And don't worry about a thing. If you've never painted before, you are in good hands. Don't worry about a thing, okay? Uh, so hopefully you have <laughs> all of your paints uh, untaped and ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through, um, well, first I'm gonna describe the materials you need to make sure everyone has what they need. And then I'm going to teach a couple of steps at a time. And then I'm going to uh, tell you that I'm gonna stop and then I'm gonna let you catch up. Nice, all right. And you're gonna be so proud of your painting. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, um, I have some, a variety of brushes here. Oops, sorry, I just dropped one. Um, but I'm gonna use a small, medium, and large brush. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover my canvas with just plain water. I use this nasty old water jar, but you can use whatever water cup or container you have handy. We're gonna cover the canvas with water because Denver is a dry place and we've got all got our heaters on, our furnaces on, and it's really dry. So we're just gonna cover the whole thing with just plain old water. That's our first step. And we're doing that because acrylic paint is made out of water, it's water soluble. Uh, it also has pigment and a binder in it, which is like glue and uh, plastic. So anyway, it's going to dry quickly. It's gonna dry about 10 minutes after you stop painting it, which is really nice. That's a huge improvement over oil painting, I think, that it will be dry this afternoon. Oil paintings, uh, I do also teach Bob Ross classes here and oil, the oil paintings we do in those classes take at least a month to, to cure so that you can touch them. So this is gonna dry in an afternoon. So go ahead and cover your canvas with water. Okay. We're gonna be using just a few colors today, primary colors white and black, of course, and then blue, red, red, and yellow. I'm only gonna use a tiny touch of the red, so you don't have to pull, put that all out if you haven't already. We're just gonna use a tiny touch of it in the sky, uh, but I just didn't need it, so I didn't take much out. We are gonna be using plenty of the other colors, though. So the first thing I'm gonna do to start my sky, I'm gonna do the background first, and then the mountains, and then the plants or trees. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my big brush. I'm gonna put one side of it in white paint. And then I'm gonna put another side of it in blue paint. And then I'm going to streak on a lovely blue sky. And I want it to look streaky. I want it to have white spots and I want it to have blue spots. So here's the thing. If you are a very, very orderly person, if you schedule people or you're in finance or accounting, um, if you are just a person who really likes a lot of order, but um, if you're a person who's very meticulous, you're gonna have to fight the urge to overblend. Okay, friends don't let friends overblend. I'm going to pick up more white as I need it. I'll probably need twice as much white as blue. And I wanna leave some of those stripes or streaks rather in the sky because those are streaky clouds. And they're, I'm pulling them horizontally. So the first, the first uh, brush had blue and white on it. And then I just picked up some white. I can pick up more blue, but I just want to make sure that I'm getting the whole canvas covered with white or blue streaks. And you're going to have to use your own judgment on exactly which color you need where, but just leave it streaky, okay? I'm also going to paint the sides and the top and the bottom of the canvas. I'm, I'm painting the sides like this. The reason I'm doing that is that if you cover the tops and the sides and the bottom of your canvas, you'll um, 
have what we call a gallery wrap. And what that means is it's a little more modern look and it doesn't require a frame. And if you don't need to get a frame, you're gonna save yourself some money. So that's always a good thing. There's nothing to prevent you from putting a gallery wrap painting, painted, um, painting in a frame, but you won't have to. So I'm going to do this all the way down the canvas because when I put in my mountains and my uh, foliage, I'm gonna just cover what we have. So streaky all the way down. One more thing, okay? One more thing is I'm gonna put more blue at the top. A little bit more blue at the top of that, straight on blue, just a little bit, because that's gonna bring my eye down. Because our eyes tend to go for things that are brighter. That's why mountains are such a great focal point because they're usually snow capped. And I'm going to um, just, I'm not gonna make the bottom quite as dark as this tippy top, okay? So blue alternating with white and we're gonna use more white, but keep it streaky. One last thing before I set you loose to visit while you paint, and that is when you see the canvas coming through like this bumpy canvasy texture, just pick up your water and get a drop or two of water on your brush. Not so much that it's dripping, but just enough to wet your bristles. And you can go over that, um, those areas with just a drop of water and it will help smooth it out. Just don't use more than a drop or two because um, drips will just give you a different kind of headache. So avoid the drips by only picking up a drop at a time but you will need to pick up water sometimes. So just like that, knock it off. And then when I paint with it, it just makes it a little bit smoother. We're gonna cover our whole canvas with blue and white. Don't use all your blue because, and don't use all your white because we will need to use them later for the other colors. So um, cover your canvas and uh, don't, don't use all your blue and white. Yep. We just want to avoid making it one complete, like um, uniform sky blue. We, we don't want that. We want to have the texture in there so that it looks like there's streaky sky, streaky clouds, both in the sky and then also in the water reflection of the sky. And it's really important too, when you're painting water, especially that you pull your brush across completely straight horizontally. I'm not doing crisscross strokes. I'm not doing circles. I'm not doing scribbles. I'm pulling my brush across horizontally. And that's not so important in the sky, but it is important in the water because water seeks its own level and it will appear flat from a distance. It always appears flat from a distance. So keeping your strokes flat, especially in the water, uh, will be helpful to you. One thing to remember, um, Everyone's painting is gonna turn out completely differently and that's a good thing because we want your personality to come through. And everyone just has a different style as an artist. So uh, don't worry if yours looks different than mine or um, mine is definitely gonna look different than the original, it already does. And, and that just is what happens. And you know, it just depends on your mood that day and how much sleep you had and what you ate for breakfast and what you're thinking about. Even if I painted the same painting tomorrow, my painting would turn out differently. So just be prepared. It's not gonna look the same, but that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Also, no one's ever gonna see the original. They're just gonna see yours and they're gonna think you're a genius. And this takes a while, the background takes a while.
if you were in a much more humid climate, your paint wouldn't dry this quickly. I'm always amazed how paint dries really fast here. Um, acrylic paint. So. I always recommend looking at your painting from about you know, five, 10 feet away, as far as you can get in the room that you're in and see, see what it looks like from a distance and make sure that you have streaks in your painting. Uh, sometimes we get to a painting and it just feels good and then we blend away everything. And uh, sometimes I do that and then I have to come back in and put in more streaks. So um, I would highly recommend looking at it from five to 10 feet away if you can get that far, even two or three feet however far your room allows you to get and look at it and uh, see if you can still see the streaks. I'm also gonna put a little bit of color right up in here. And remember when I said we didn't really have red in the painting, but there's just, just this little tiny bit of lavender in the sky. And I'm gonna make that by just taking the tiniest amount of red. So little, it's like a ladybug or less. I don't want to say half a ladybug because that's gross, but it's just a tiny bit of red and I'm mixing it with a tiny bit of blue, a tiny bit of white, just so I get a pale lavender because I want to straight streak in just a little bit of color in my sky up here. Oh, that's bright. I'm going to have to cover that with some blue. Go easy on the red, it's, it, it can be pretty potent in your sky. But if I just go over it a little bit, it just blends right in. Just a little. And then whatever I do to the sky, I have to do a little bit to down here. Not as obvious because reflections are never as strong and bold as what they reflect. They're always a little weaker. Oh, how'd I do that? I didn't mean to put yellow on there. But that's a great way to show you happy accidents, right? No problem. If you do something like that, I accidentally picked up yellow instead. There's a few ways. While it's still really wet, I can do this, see if I can pull any of it off. I pulled off a little. And then I can also just paint white over whatever I've done. Want to wait till it's a little dry. I'll let, let that dry and I'll paint more white over it. And then I'll paint blue over it. You can always fix it if you make a mistake. That's a reason I love painting is life is not easy to fix. Paintings are easy to fix. Also, life doesn't let you be in charge and put mountains where you want mountains and put, put skies and trees where you want them. But when you paint, you're in total control. You can do it any way you want. It's your world. So for me, painting is very relaxing that way when life is handing me COVID and closures and you know financial worries or whatever, I can just create my own world when I paint. It's hard to be in a bad mood when you paint. Bob Ross used to say, uh, every day is a good day to paint.
okay? Yes, I'm okay. Before COVID happened, and uh, you know, we've been open about eight years. I've owned it for five. And under normal times, we have a lot of private groups that come in here. We've had um, uh, school shooting victims and their families. We've had refugees. We've had uh, cancer survivors. In addition to the Friday and Saturday night, people who just come in to drink and laugh and have a good time with their friends. Um, but the thing that's really great that I love when we have the, the groups that are coming in for therapeutic, therapeutic reasons, um, what I really love is the fact that whatever's going on in their world, they can get away from it for a while because it's really hard to think about anything else when you're thinking about your painting. And uh, we've had We've had some, we've seen people come in here on a regular basis who just had really incredible personal growth, both in their painting skills and in other ways. And sometimes they share those things with me and it's just, it's such an honor. Um, so I hope if you have fun today that you'll encourage your clients and um, to, to do something expressive, to do, to do art, what, whether they feel confident about it or not, just have fun and try something new because it does help you uh, forget about your world, your troubles and, and learn something new and have confidence in a brand new area. Anyway, I'm gonna streak this to death if I keep going. So I'm gonna show you the next step, okay? And then if you're not there yet, don't worry, don't worry, okay? No worries. What I'm gonna show you are these happy clouds. So I'm gonna pick up a medium brush and I'm putting white paint on both sides of my medium brush. And I'm going to paint a few clouds. And I'm gonna do it by swirling, but I'm gonna kind of mess up my swirls, swirls, okay? Circular swirls, right? And then I'm gonna fill them in underneath a little bit, and then I'm gonna kind of wipe them out at the bottom. So it's a lot more paint at the top. That's where I put it first. And then at the bottom, it just fades away. And then they're pulled flat with those skinny flat clouds. The reason that happens is, and this is, I'm gonna get all sciency on you for a minute. There's less atmospheric pressure up. And so things just below, the moisture just billows and doesn't have anything to hold it down. And then down here, there's more gravity and there's more wind that pulls it across the horizon. So clouds tend to flatten out on the bottoms and fluff and stay billowy on the tops. Not always, but generally that happens a lot. So it's a, putting plenty of paint on my brush in the beginning, fluffy, swirly, move them around a bit, get, get ununiform about it, and then fill it in a little bit with little, little swirls underneath, not picking up any more paint. Use the same paint all along, don't pick up it anymore, and then just pull it across like you're just blending it in with your clouds at the bottom. Just pull, pull, pull. And I'm going to do a half one here because I want them on different planes, different levels. I'll put a half one here. And definitely I want to make them different sizes and shapes. I don't want them all to be exactly the same. So maybe this one has a crazy up, updraft. All right. And here's the thing. If you don't like your clouds, just cover them with more sky and no one will ever know. What we wanna avoid are cotton balls. Don't, don't put just a ball, please, in the sky, uh, just a 
round circle, they need to have a little bit of shape to them, or they should. But you know, again, your world, if you want to do cotton balls, you do that. You do you. When you're putting on the top of it, you have to be careful when you start to fill it in underneath, don't touch the top. It's kind of like, let's say you had a dog with an electric fence call and you know, and a collar and an electric fence, the dog will run right. right up to the fence to bark at the squirrel, but won't touch the fence, right? So I'm gonna pretend that my brush is my dog with the electric collar. This is the top of the fence. And when I come in and I blend underneath, I'm gonna be really careful not to touch the top of that fence. I wanna stay underneath. So if you have, if yours is not bright and brilliant at the top, and I'll do it on this one just to show you. If it's not bright and brilliant at the top, um, go ahead and put more of that on there and just do it again. And then down here, I'm not gonna go anywhere near that top. I'm just gonna, Use less and less paint as I go to scribble it in and then eventually flatten it out. I'm not picking up any more paint and I'm not going near that top because I want that top to be the brightest part of the painting. And like I said, if you don't like it, no one will ever know you even did it if you just blend it out and put your sky back. You don't have to have clouds. your world. And real skies, they change it about every five minutes, right? So it's always a good idea to have a beverage with you because it's just good to stay hydrated. I'm drinking water today. Um, usually in the evenings, I have a glass of wine, help me relax. If you drink one glass of wine, it can really help you relax and, and um, you know, just help you be calm enough to focus on the matter, the task in hand. If you have two, um, it's going to be a little harder to paint, but you'll think you're Michelangelo. <laughs> and if you have three, you'll just have to bring it into me at the studio and I'll finish it for you. So I have my medium brush. I'm going to put some white paint on it like that. And then I'm going to put another one, say, I'm going to put one right here, maybe a smaller one. So I'm going to make my loopy loops, my fluffy tops, right? Okay, you could turn it over if you're running out of paint there. I'm not gonna pick up any more paint on this brush. I'm just gonna fill in the inside there. And then I'm just gonna flatten my brush strokes and pull it out a bit. Just pull it out and you could, you know, make those wispy and messy and go wherever. That's it. But I'm not, I would never touch the tops of them when I'm filling it in underneath. I can add more on the side if I have extra on my brush, maybe. But I wanna leave those fluffy parts bright white. I don't wanna fill it, touch those tops again. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the next step so we don't, um, I know you guys are a really thoughtful group of people. I can tell that already about you. And I don't want you to worry too much about small things in the painting. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our mountains. Woohoo! We're gonna make some beautiful peaks on our mountains. So what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna draw them on with a small brush and some white paint, okay? And notice I have one, two, three that show up. There's a fourth one here, but it's behind the plants. Uh, the trees. So here's the thing. I would recommend either three or four peaks. Uh, three is kind of nice. It's a nice number because then uh, it's, you won't have things symmetrical. And when you're painting a landscape, you don't want symmetry. You don't want perfect symmetry. You want things to look more natural. So random um, uh, number of trees, for example, or 
odd numbers of mountains, that tends to look more natural. So what I would recommend is going with three. But if you wanna do more, do more. So you're painting your world. I'm gonna have my biggest peak right in the center, and it's gonna be about one third of the way down your canvas, okay? I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna put a dot, boop, and then we come down and put a triangle, the top of a triangle. What size brush are we using? Our big one or? Okay. I'm using a tiny one, a small one, a small okay. detail brush and white paint. Okay. Good question, thank you. And then I, what I wanna avoid is perfect rectangles. I don't want it to look like Charlie Brown's shirt, right? So I'm gonna come down and then make this one a little shorter and then I'll pull it off to the side. Now this one has to be a little different than both of these. So it doesn't look perfect, right? And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go, this one's this level, this one's this level. So I'm gonna try to go in between and then I wanna avoid having a perfect, perfect symmetry. I also made this one a little more round. You can, you can do that or not do that. It doesn't really matter. The key is just don't make them all the same, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my medium brush. I always clean my brushes in between, lots of water, lots of swishing. And then I just check them on the napkin to make sure they're clean. Um, so then I'm gonna pick up my medium brush and I'm uh, actually not gonna put on white. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on, I know it's gonna be crazy, black, okay? And I'm gonna pull it in, pull it down, but I want the lightest coat I can get. Just a tiny, tiny bit of black. I don't want too much. It's the tiniest amount of black I can put on. Very, very little paint. Because I, the, the more paint I put on, the more I have to let it dry and the more that I have to um, fight it when I put on white highlights. So I'm just putting on the tiniest amount on my medium brush and I'm pulling down these strokes, these light strokes in the direction that I would ski or sled down that hill. So on this side of the mountain, I would pull down the strokes to the left. On this side of the mountain, I'd pull down to the right because that's how I would ski down it if I were a skier or a hiker or a snowboarder or a sledder, whatever, okay? So this is very light. You see it's not covered, completely covered in black. It's not solid, just a little bit of paint. That's all I need. Then it will dry thin. And a little bit of that blue is showing through. I'm fine with that. I'm good with that. So on this mountain, I'm pulling down to the right on the right side. On the left side, I pull down to the left. Notice I'm not going into my lake. I'm not coming all the way down. This is still in the middle of my canvas, the middle third. Leave this so that you will have a lake. Questions about that? Again, put it on really thinly, okay? Just a little bit of paint. And stay in that middle third of the cam canvas, okay? We wanna leave a lake below it. So this is on thinly, very thin. And because I put it on thin, it's already dry. So if yours is still wet, you're gonna have to wait a few minutes, okay? And I'm gonna take that medium brush again, and I'm gonna dip it in paint this way. Watch this, just dip it in, because I don't want it all covered. I don't want my brush covered with paint 
on the, all the bristles, just a little bit at the tips. See that, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm going to do the same thing that I did before, but this time with white. And I'm gonna start in the peak, the top of the peak, and I'm gonna pull ever so lightly and softly over the black, very softly. And I'm doing it softly because I don't wanna cover all the blue and all the black. I want some of the black to shine through and I want some of the blue to shine through. So it's, it's soft and gentle, okay? It's like I'm putting, it's like I had a caterpillar and he had a sunburn and he asked me to put aloe vera on his skin. So I don't wanna hurt my little caterpillar, right? So I'm gonna go real soft, real soft. It's like putting aloe vera on a sunburned caterpillar, just super, you don't wanna squish them, you don't wanna hurt them, just soft, soft, soft. Bob Ross, when he paints, and he painted with oils, but he used to say two hairs and some air. And that, that works pretty well for me. And I'm also pulling it down in the same direction that I would ski or that I would snowboard or sled or in my case fall. Pulling it down in that same direction, barely touching the canvas. My, my brush, I'm putting no pressure. I literally have like four hairs touching that canvas, putting on that snow, those snowy highlights. Two hairs and some air. Now the, the reason that works is because um, I want those, I want some of that black to be shining through and I want some of the blue to be shining through. I say shining, not really sparkly shining, but just coming through because that shows the nooks and crannies of the mountain surface. Maybe there's some caves where the bears are. Maybe there's some forests in those dark areas. Maybe that's um, uh, recessed areas like holes, you know. Uh, so you want to have light and you want to have dark. Bob Ross always used to say, and, and, and I know this isn't a Bob Ross painting, but he was a, a real mentor to me and to a lot of other painters. Um, he used to say, you have to have dark to see the light. So if you cover all of your dark and then put light on top of it and uh, you know cover all your dark with white, you can't, you won't have this beautiful texture. So let, let the dark come through and put light on top of it and the two together make it look nice. I wanna show you one other thing that's just kind of fun, okay? So this is one way to do it. This way is just kind of fun. So if you wanna leave a mountain and try this, you could do it. See this business card? When I have little kids in here, I, call them, I show this to them, I call it my card trick. I'm gonna dip it in my white paint, just the end just the end, so it's a little bit of white paint. See that? There's a very little at the tip. I can use that business card to get a similar edge. Isn't that cool? That's kind of fun. So if you wanna try it with a business card, you could do that too. You have to pull in the same direction that you would ski or sled. Bob, uh, Bob Ross, or you know, lots of painters paint with a knife, right? With a palette knife, and it's basically the same thing. You're just using the sharp edge of a knife. But I love the look that a card gives you. I have all kinds of fun with business cards here. It's great for making uh, aspen bark too. Uh, so we have about a hundred free bit, uh, painting classes on our YouTube channel. And so, um, you know, if you're bored and you have a kit with paint in it, unlike Mark's, um, or if you have paint, you can just, you know, paint along with me on, on the YouTube channel as well. But um, pick one with aspen trees and you can see how you make really cool bark with a business card and aspen trees. 
I don't want to cover all my dark and I don't want to cover all my light, but this is, this is fun. So if you have a business card, you want to try it, why not? If you can't play here and now, when can you play? Want to see one other thing? This is fun too. I'm going to take this business card. I'm going to put it in black and I'll show you if I did too much white, I can always do the same thing in black. Watch this. I'm having way too much fun over here. That's what I do when I make, oh, see how that's too much? I can just come in with white and reverse it. Dang, it's fun. All kinds of good, good times. So like each of your peaks looks like, you know, it goes pretty, like you can see the middle of it where it's very defined. Mine's not. That's okay. You can, you, make it that? Defined. you can make it defined uh, with a business card if you want. I think that did give it a sharper line or just make sure that when you're using your brush, um, here I'll show you. When you're using your medium brush, if you chisel it a little bit on your plate, okay, I'm chiseling to get a flat surface, a flat line on my brush. See that really skinny flat line? If I, now mine's, yeah. I don't wanna get this too wet, but if I use that flat surface, I can create a ridge by touching down and then flicking it to get those sharper lines. Does that make sense? Try it. So the wonderful thing about this painting is even though it has pretty mountains and beautiful clouds in it, the focal point of the painting actually becomes the lake. And if you made sky all the way down, you're almost all the way there with your lake. So not to worry. If we're, if we're tempted to be perfectionists about any part of it, just remember it all works together and none of it has to be perfect. We're gonna be covering up the sides and this bottom part with foliage. So don't worry about any of that. Now with this stuff, make sure your brushes are clean. I was Make sure they're clean in between steps. I'm going to be using a medium flat brush. And I need to, I'm just going to take the tiniest amount, teeny tiny, teeny tiny little bit of black paint, but so little, not like a scoop. I barely touched the bristles and I just want to hold it flat and just kind of scribble in a little line moving sideways along the back. And you can make it, your line go up and down a bit if you want to show your uh, river has contour. If you want to get all fancy on us, that's fine. But we just want to kind of define where we're going to be putting our plants. Just a little scribbled line, very little paint. Excuse me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a bigger medium brush. We're going to start on this side, okay? And we're going to put on layers. So the first layer is I'm going to chisel my big brush in some black paint. But when I chisel it, what I'm doing is I'm just making it so that there's paint on my bristles, but not a lot of paint. I don't want a scoop of paint. I don't want anything that would fall off when I do this. So that's what I mean when I say chisel. I'm just putting it on the sides and I'm knocking off any clumps, okay? Now I'm gonna start 
really tiny. I'm gonna use just the corner. See that corner? I'm gonna use just that corner of my big brush. That's it, just the corner. And I'm just gonna tap on, just tap, 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 little lines. I'll say that up close. Just tapping on little lines with the corner of my flat brush. But then as I get farther to the left, I'm gonna make those lines bigger. And then I'm really gonna put a lot of pressure. Boom, 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 as I come around. So here I'm barely touching it, but as, the, as I'm getting closer around the lake, then I'm using a lot of pressure. And they're my attempt at lines, but here they look more like bushes and that's okay. What I'm going for is those spiky looking tops. I want these tops to look a little spiky. So you can go back in and put in little spikes if you want on the tops if it's not spiky. At the bottom, they don't need to be spiky. In fact, this could all be flat. What I'm painting on by doing that, this, is this is the, these are the shadows under the plants, believe it or not. These are the darkest part of the plants where it's not getting a whole lot of light. So we're gonna build up. Um, the tops of, these, of this forest is getting more light. So as we go up, it's gonna get lighter and lighter. Don't put it on thick or else you'll have to wait a long time for it to dry, okay? Put it on, use just a little paint, okay? I'm gonna clean my brush really well then. I do have to let that dry a bit. So put it on thinly. When in doubt, put it on thin, okay? We can always come back and fill in later if it's on, if it's not enough. So while you're doing that, I'll just tell you this part. You don't have to worry, it's not an instruction. But I painted this painting two ways. I painted it with the black first, and then green, and then lighter green, and then yellow, and then white, in that order. And then sometimes I painted it the opposite way. I put on the yellow first, and then the light green, and then the darker green, and then the black. And both ways work. But once you commit to one order, I would just go with it. Just whatever you do, don't put it on too thick, okay? Because we do want it to dry. So we're gonna let that dry and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the background of our two pine trees. So here, I don't even know what kind of trees these are for sure. And I don't really care. Your guess is as good as mine. Your guess is probably better than mine. But on this side, they're definitely evergreens. So I'm gonna show you how to make the, the evergreens and they're gonna be in a couple of uh, two to three steps. I'd say three steps. So we're gonna do just the first step of the evergreens, okay? So I'm gonna take a, a medium flat brush. This flat brush is getting a lot of work today. It's getting a workout. And I'm gonna put paint on both sides. When I keep petting it like this, on the patting it or um, on the plate, but not in the thickest part, it's pushing that paint between the bristles. And then I'm, I'm gonna chisel it, just knocking off any big clumps. But now I'm pretty confident that there's plenty of paint between my bristles, but no big clumps that I have to worry about, okay? I'm gonna start with the pine tree over here. And this is where I would just recommend that you watch really carefully, okay? And I'll put this up as close as I can. 
I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do, this, this tree is gonna be tall, it's gonna be way up here, okay? And some of it's gonna be going off the edge because that's the composition of this one, but that's okay. Just pretend the canvas goes a little farther. All right, so I'm gonna, first I'm gonna tap on a trunk and I'm gonna tap it on. Why would I tap it on instead of pulling? Because this gives it that bumpy texture. And it reminds me that nothing in nature is perfect. So I can't possibly make a perfectly straight line if I'm tapping it on, and that's good. I don't, I don't want perfect. Perfect doesn't look real. And then I'm gonna drop down a half an inch, okay? And I'm going to put on my first layer of paint right there like that. And then it's really small, really small. And then, let's see if I can get any closer. And then I'm gonna tap, tap, tap each successive clump of branches, not perfect, not perfect, starting in the center and going out, not perfect. Little, little clumps, little, uh, quite a few taps to make each branch, okay? And then with each one, I'm gonna go out a little bit farther because I want my pine tree to have a, um, triangular look. But notice how I'm not making it perfectly straight. I don't want it to look like a ladder. So I'm tapping some kind of random ones around the trunk, right? And then tapping out. Don't make it each one perfect, okay? What we want to go for is more natural, less perfect. This is the first part of our pine tree. And you can paint it on the side if you're so inclined. Your call. And you're using the color black? <clears throat> I'm using just black, yep. This is the first step. When it dries, we'll add some other colors on top. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, we're painting black because this is the shadows. and the branches that aren't getting any light. Tap, bring it all the way down to the bottom. So normally when people paint a pine tree, they frequently think of Christmas trees, so they'll leave a stump at the bottom. But Christmas trees have the bottom branches cut off so that you can take it home. So out in the, you know, if you're in Estes Park or out in Grand Lake or something, the, the pine trees don't have the bottom branches cut off the grass grows all the way up to the bottom branch. So bring these all the way down, okay? So after I get my tree on, it's looking skimpy in the middle. Can you see how it looks skimpy in the middle? There are branches that grow out to the side that way, the branches that grow out to the side to the left, there are branches that grow to the front, and branches that grow to the back. The only way I can paint the ones that go to the front and the back is by just tapping some extra fullness over the middle third of the tree. Just in the general trunk area, see how I'm just kind of tapping to make the tree a little thicker? That, getting so I can't see the trunk. That kind of fattens up my tree. Those are the branches that are sticking out straight toward me or straight back. Always make sure your tree has a sharp point at the top. Your eyes will say, oh, that's a pine tree. So if you missed any of that, don't worry, because I'm gonna show you it one more time. Every tree needs a friend, right? Everybody needs a friend. This one has a short friend. Here's a short friend right here, okay? Or her short friend, or their short friend, however they identify. Okay, right here, another tree. Tap, 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 tap. Drop down a half an inch, let, um, respecting that every tree is growing and uh, there are tiny little baby buds of branches up there that I can't even see, right? Everybody has growth you can't see yet. 
All right, back and forth, back and forth. I'm holding it up like that so I can get to the bottom when I get down to the bottom. I guess I'm not there yet. And this is lots of taps, lots of taps. It's taking me a lot of taps and it's okay. I'm just gonna take my time. I'm holding my brush pretty flat though. If I had somebody sitting on top of the bristles with a cup of coffee, that it would not be spilling. My branches are pretty flat. I'm holding my brush pretty flat. You can always pick up a little more paint toward the bottom. You're gonna need it, maybe. Always make sure that your evergreens have that rectangular shape because they're the old growth is wider and fuller than the new growth. And then I'm gonna to look toward the middle, see where I can still see the trunk. And I'm gonna tap in extra fullness over that middle part so it hides the, the trunk a bit. And that's painting those branches coming out toward me and going to the back. A little more fullness over the trunk area. And there I go, I got two pine trees, woohoo. And then I'm gonna let those dry and I'll come back and do the highlights on them later. I'm gonna clean that medium brush really well. Make sure you have clean brushes, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and start the next part. And again, if you're not done with your trees, just try to listen up, okay? So what I wanna do is I need to find a place where I can mix some blue and some yellow. And so find a place, hopefully you have a little space on your plate or on the rim. I'm gonna take a little of my blue and I'm gonna pick up a little of my yellow and I'm gonna stir that in. And what I'm going for is a dark green. And you might need more yellow than blue. Yellow tends to be a more translucent color and blue a more opaque color, like the pigments are more powerful, the blue. Um, but we're going for a dark green and then we'll lighten it up later. So as long as you have a dark green, that'll be good. I'm gonna take that dark green on my medium brush. Same kind of thing on both sides, but not a scoop. We don't want a big, it's not like ice cream. We don't wanna get a scoop of it. In fact, it tastes nasty, trust me. All right, so I've got my uh, paint on my medium brush. And now I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna tap on just tiny, tiny bit of little lines with the corner. Just tapping over those ones in the back, just adding another little layer of color. And then I'm gonna to have to be more aggressive as I do the next layer. And these are, it's kind of like putting on mascara. If you've ever put on mascara, it's higher. It's sitting higher than the um, black. Make sure that this part on the side is higher or taller here than, and it gets tinier, tinier, tinier to, um, than the back of the lake. The back of the lake, they should just look like tiny little specks. And that's how we're painting the perspective of the lake is by having the ones in the back of the lake really tiny. Just like if you saw your friends coming down the street far away, they're gonna look tiny and then they're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger until they're close to you. Same thing, that's what we're going for. After we get that green layer on, we can go ahead and just add a little more yellow, a little more yellow to our green and just come with, uh, make a lighter shade of green. Now mine's like a new grass green. Just add a little more yellow to it. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing. And this time, I'm going to go real lightly. I don't want to cover all the black back there. I don't want to cover all the dark green. Just adding a new layer. And each time I put on a new layer, it's getting taller. It's overlapping with the old layer, but not completely covering it. I can still see the black, I can still see the dark green, and now I've got this new layer of a lighter green and no feedback, yay. If you're able, you don't have to wash your brush between each one now because we're just gonna add more yellow and yellow and yellow and then we'll add white. Um, uh, but with a tiny brush, I'm gonna go in you see this reflection here? I'm just gonna take the tiniest amount of that dark green if I can still find any. See that little dark green? See that? And I'm just gonna scribble just the tiniest little line over that black line in the water of just dark green, just a little bit. And then more as it comes down, just a tiny bit. See that? Just a teeny tiny amount. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with that light green. So each time I add a little of a new color, I'm just gonna put the teeniest, tiniest amount of that color and it could be broken up, it could be broken up. Just kind of with the tiniest brush I can find and just scribble on a teeny tiny bit of that color because this is the reflection in the water of what we have going on up top, but it's really light. I don't want to fill it in, fill in my whole lake with it. I don't want to swamp. This is a little swampy. Um, just go easy. But with each color, I'm just going to scribble in a teeny tiny bit and let all those colors kind of dance and play together back there. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little more yellow and I'm just going to keep Keep doing this. I'm adding a little more yellow now for the next row. And back here, super tiny, just the corners. And the back of the lake, just the corner, super tiny. But then as I get closer, they're getting taller, 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 sitting right on top of that, what I had before. So the very end, they're pretty tall. These are pretty tall. And I'm being lazy, I'm not really cleaning my brush. I just keep going into a little more yellow. And I'll just do it again. Tiny, 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 tiny. Back there. And then more yellow as I go up. And make it so it's not perfectly straight if you can help it, because some trees would be taller than others, right? Just like people. You don't want anything too perfect. We don't want it to look like Disney World. We want it to look more natural than that. I think I'm gonna clean my brush because I'm just accumulating a lot of paint. I'm gonna stop right there though, because I wanna show you something else before we keep going higher. Let's catch up to that then, then we'll Take a break from that and do something on these trees. Our painting's really coming together. There's not a lot more. You guys are doing fantastic. Whatever layer you did last, don't forget to scribble in a tiny bit. 
just a teeny tiny bit of that color in your water as a reflection, just a little bit. So that those reflections have all the colors represented too, but in much smaller amounts than what's up above. I didn't want to tell you this when you started. This is a hard painting. And, but I also knew you could do it. I believed in you. All right, I'm going to show you how to put some highlights on your, on your trees. We'll do it in two steps. Um, the highlights in two steps. Basically, I'm just going to put my brush into some of that medium green. And then I'm going to basically the, do the same technique that I did on the branches, but here's the difference. I don't wanna cover all my black, remember? Uh, you have to have dark to see the light. You have to show all the different shades in your tree for it to be beautiful. Just, just like a neighborhood in my opinion. You need all of the diversity in your tree. And so I'm gonna not cover over all of the, brand, the black blanchet branches. I'm, maybe, maybe some will be covered, maybe some of them will not be. I'm not gonna do it slow enough to really even think about it. I'm just gonna tap on some, but I'm gonna definitely not cover the black. I just wanna come in with some lighter, I just picked up a little much, too much yellow, lighter color, the green, and it's gonna add another layer, another flavor to this tree. And I still wanna see the black behind it. I still wanna see a little sky behind it or a mountain, whatever it's in front of. Let those layers show, let the layers show. Now it's looking more like a tree, right? And then we're gonna let that dry and then we'll put just a tiny bit on top of all that and even lighter. I'm using probably a third of the paint that I originally used when I put it on in black. Just light, just a little bit, it just highlights. And I'm bringing them all the way out to the tips of the branches too, because it would make sense that the branches have sunlight on the tips, right? And the lighter color shows the same branches, but just highlighted. It's they're just the star of the show with a little sunlight on them. And then when you're done putting highlights on your tree, then you can just go in with some straight yellow and we are really gonna build up these now. Woohoo, look at that. This is fun, straight yellow. I wanna make these nice and tall. It's straight yellow, but you know what? It's still looking a little green because the paint is, yellow is a more translucent color, but we're not done yet. But see how much fun I'm having? These are nice and tall, woohoo! And then they're gonna get shorter, 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 until so they're just specks back there. And I'm gonna take that straight yellow, a little bit more reflection, scribble, 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 scribble. I'm hoping that some of the things that we're doing make sense. So then when you do paint yourself, you can kind of think about it, like that you learn something about, well, when you paint foliage, you need shadows. Um, 
or you need, if you paint water, you need reflections. If you paint a tree, there are different shades in a tree. If, if you can take that away, I'll be really thrilled. And then it's just practice when you understand the general idea or that clouds are fluffier on the top and flatter on the bottom. Usually. Always, always exceptions to everything, it seems. Did anyone have any questions about those highlights in their trees? It was basically the same thing we did before with the black. It was just putting green, another layer, that's it, and lighter. For my last layer on these trees back here, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna take a clean medium brush and I'm gonna mix my yellow, a bunch of my yellow with a bunch of my white. So I have a really pale lemony yellow because it has a lot of white in it. That's gonna be the top layer of my whatever kind of trees these are. And you can pop them on like that for a little more texture if you want, it's kind of fun. Or you can drag them. Your trees, your world, you decide. I kind of like the texture look by popping on these lines. But I don't even know what these trees are, so. But I think these pops definitely add a nice little treetop look to it. And then real small in the back, of course. Getting the sides too. Take a look at your, this side of your trees and just make sure none, nothing looks too perfect. If it looks like you lined up a roller, you might wanna make a tree a lot taller or crooked or leaning or something. You don't want anything to look too perfect, okay? We're not going for perfection, we're going for pretty. And once again, with my teeny tiny brush, just a little bit of that, scribble just a tiny bit, tiny bit in the reflection, scribble, 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 scribble. We just have one more step and then we sign our name. Woohoo! I'm gonna give you all the time you need to finish that up. So don't worry, if you feel rushed, I'm giving you lots of time to catch up. I'm gonna add a little medium green over some of my black just to break it up. I don't want anything to look too perfect. Take all the time you need. We just have a couple more steps. So this painting, even though it's an acrylic painting, really reminds me a lot of our Bob Ross paintings. So if you can do this painting, I know you could do our Bob Ross classes. We aren't doing them right now during the pandemic, but we will be doing those once things get back 
back to normal. So if, if you enjoyed painting this and found it a little challenging and you wanna do something similar, but in oil paints, keep us in mind. Um, I might not be offering those until March or April, just depends on how the pandemic goes, uh, but those are six hours long, uh, but they're with oil paintings and you end up with this you know, beautiful Bob Ross oil painting class and you get tons of one-on-one -on -one instruction in those classes. I keep them down to just a handful of people. All right, I notice it's 3.05 and I wanna keep honest and true to my word about ending times as close as I can, even though I'm a few minutes over. So I'm just gonna show you the next step. And if you're not there, don't worry, you can stay on. I'll leave my painting up and um, I'll be available to you as long as you need it. But I am gonna just show you this next thing. I'm gonna put, go into my yellow and I'm just gonna tap on a few little yellow highlights on my trees as well, mostly on the tips of the branches because that's really showing the sunlight. It makes it even look a little more 3D. And it's a lot less paint than I used either the, with the first one, the black or with the green highlights. It's still a lot less paint, but just a little yellow over those, just creating another layer of little branch highlights. And those three working together, the black, the green, the yellow, man, they just say, I am alive. I'm a living tree. And it gives a little more balance to the painting too, to have a little brightness on the side too. Not as much, but a little bit. There's so much over here. But don't cover all your dark, leave some dark. One more step, then we'll sign our names. The last thing we're gonna do is gonna take the teeny tiniest little detail brush we can find, put a little tiny bit of white paint on it. And then just where the bottom of your trees meets your lake, meets the reflection, we're just gonna go back and forth and scribble on a little water line back there. I'm dividing up the trees from the reflection. And notice how I'm kind of scribbling back and forth because I might not be perfect in it, but it's basically just defining the waterline and dividing up 
the reflection. And then with that same brush and the same white paint, I can pull some of those straight across because these water lines are basically ripples in the water. And it's really important to get them as straight as you can because these are the, these are like the ducks jumping in the water, maybe the flags, the frogs splashing, um, or maybe there's a log floating in there, or maybe the wind is just kind of pushing the water and making little waves, we don't know. And th this just is showing the movement of the water, just little lines, random shapes, or not shapes, random lengths rather, across the top of the water. Just adding a little bit of movement those ripples are just being highlighted in the water. And I can put a few more of them, just pull them straight, pull them straight. Put as many or as few as you want, it's up to you. And that is it for me, that is it. I am gonna just tell you if you wanna paint a little bird in your sky, I'll show you how to do it, super easy. Teeny tiny little flat brush, teeny tiny. Gonna touch my canvas with my pinky to steady my hand. And then I make the easiest birds. From a dot, you just go up, up, and then down. From dot, go up, oops, up, and then down. That's it. If it if it were a spider, I'd put eight legs. It's, you know, that kind of shape, easy, easy. And I always like to put a friend. This one might be a little bigger or a little smaller, you decide, and then boom. In my opinion, every bird needs a friend. But maybe you don't want birds. If you don't want birds, don't do birds. All right, and then I'm gonna sign my painting, woohoo! And you can sign it anywhere you want. You decide where to sign it, I'm gonna sign it bottom right left hand corner usually I do it the right but my trees are there so I think I'll just go ahead and pretend like it's another water line putting my little initials with a fine detail brush and that's it and so I hope you'll sign your paintings as well in one of the corners and then when I see it in the Denver Art Museum I'll know exactly who you were <laughs>